like the energy of the sun and the energy of the sea. Labor of man is a creative force which, together with other forces, brings to fulfillment the plan of the universe. The energy of the sun gives light, and the energy of the sea brings rain. Light and water are essential to life and growth. The labor of man uses sunlight with rainwater to grow food and to make clothes and shelter and power and all things a modern world needs for the welfare and the gladness of all its people. The sun and the sea are creations without a soul. Man, who gives his labor to fulfill creation, has a soul. And man has the great dignity of the human person. The psalmist says of man, Thou hast placed him only a little below the angels, crowning him with glory and honor, and bidding him rule over the works of thy hands. Psalm 8. Labor, the activity of man, is the most valuable and the most important of all the energies which develop and beautify matter. The worker is the most important and most valuable to society. And in a universal way, all are givers of labor. The owner of capital, who puts it to work, the owner of land, who puts it to use, and the work, who gives his labor to make the land produce, to develop its resources, and to provide services necessary to a modern nation. All of us are workers. And we rejoice that our government and people have marked this day to honor the dignity and the importance of our Belizean worker, and indeed, the workers of all countries. We know how valuable and how important our Belizean workers are, and how they should have their rightful place in our new nation. Representatives of our workers are on our National Economic Development Council and on many governmental committees. It is right that workers should also be owners of capital and of land, and in this way, they will have a real stake in the economic life of our country. From labor, capital, and land must come the resources and the energies to build a prosperous and happy nation. Government has made available large tracts of land for development and government has given security of tenure to this land. The policy continues to prevail all over the country. When all these three resources of development move forward in harmony, in partnership and with efficiency, there will not only be a good climate for development, but there will also be prosperity. Many workers are part owners of our Development Finance Corporation. Many are owners of land. And many have saved their money in the beginning of capital formation. There must be many more such enterprising workers. You have supported us from the very beginning of our movement of independence. And we know your worth. That is why we respect your ability to understand and to support our plans to better our country and its people. We believe in truth and in sincerity. We believe in truth and in sincerity. That is why we publicly accept the facts and the problems of our country, which at this stage of its history is a country largely undeveloped for many years, but now striving with might and mean to develop its resources and to better the lives of its people. It is easy and indeed tempting to gain a temporary political advantage by making glowing but impossible promises which the financial, economic, and commercial facts of our country cannot fulfill at this moment. It is easy but dishonest to blame our government for not doing things that cannot be done at this moment by any government in our country. To avoid economic setbacks and social strife, there is constant need for workers to use the intelligence with which the Belizean worker is so well endowed. There are some hard and unpleasant economic facts which we as a people must face. It is not our policy to hide from you these facts. One fact 
is that our country is a small and poor country. Because our economy is backward, your government is working hard to develop its resources and to provide sources of income for its people who contribute to the building of our nation. There has been progress in the sugar and citrus and pine resin industries, but there is need for more industries and greater farming activities in order to provide employment for every Belizean worker who wishes to work. Another fact is that this country does not have all the capital and skills it takes to push the country forward in economic development. At this stage of our development, we must depend largely on capital and skills from abroad. And to get these capital and skills, our Belizean people must hold out incentives to investors from abroad. We have to share with them the fruits of our labors until a happy time when they themselves will be content to let our Belizean workers manage their affairs. They are the ones who have the capital, the skills, and the international markets, and we must be partners with them. And partnerships mean sharing justly and rightly the fruits of our labors. Still another hard economic fact is so well put in the fable of the goose which laid the golden egg. While our government is most anxious to ensure a greater and greater share for our workers, it will not be right to deprive one group of our workers in order to benefit another group. An example of this would be to place the income of some workers so high that there will not be enough money left to employ other workers. And thus, we will set up a privileged working class while many other workers will be jobless. Equally wrong would be to allow other sources of production to grab for themselves the lion's share of the fruits of production. As I said earlier in this talk, it is vitally necessary to create a climate of development in which the workers have a share in capital and land as well. This is the best insurance for an orderly, peaceful and profitable development of our resources. I've mentioned some hard facts of the economic life of our country. Any person who contradicts them and holds out glowing but impossible promises for a fleeting political advantage would be a false champion of the workers. There is no need to be despondent, as we recall the facts of the present time. I will not be speaking an untruth when I say that our country has progressed in the last three years. Despite the many problems we have faced, and we shall continue to face, visitors to our country have had to admit that we are a nation fast emerging. We should not be frightened by the hard economic facts in our country today and in the world abroad. On Labor Day, we measure them with truth and sincerity. We face them with courage and with the hope that by hard work and sustained effort, the community endeavor, we shall improve the life of every Belizean. As you celebrate Labor Day, we are true Belizean patriots, true Belizean workers when we face these challenges of a building nation and determine ourselves to work harder and to stand firm behind the movement of independence. This movement has brought our country and people far along the road of progress. With the continued support and confidence of the people, the movement of independence will take us all the way.